Hello, welcome to the Battling Barrow, and it's another terrain making guide type thing. Uh, was it last year? No, last year was a bad year, wasn't it? All round. Uh, the year before, I did some Shire terrain um, stuff, and I made uh, a video on paths. And the second bit was roads. Now that was rather cheating because that was sort of utilising a ask uh, stuff I made probably about fifteen years ago at least 10 years ago, probably 15 years ago. So it wasn't really a video, it's more um, pictures of a terrain system using a road system. But I was never very happy with it, I've never been very happy with it. One, I made it from phone call and it warped like no one's business, so roads were like that. Two, um, it just didn't fit onto the table very well. So you'd have a straight, a curve straight curve going up and it'd be too big for the table too small for the table so what we're doing in this video I'm revisiting that and doing it properly the paths in that video still legit because I made those for the video so they're still good I like those but the road part of it didn't like so what I'm doing is I'm going to utilize a grid system so each road piece is going to be by default six inches by six inches so little straight the curves t-junctions crossroads all going to be six inches by six inches as well as a few cheap uh, straights are going to be six inches by 12 inches just so you can lay down quicker and so you would end up with something like this and that is what we're going to be making uh, today nice little road system so nice quick and easy this video is also part of this crazy scheme idea I've got for this year where I want to make my own wargaming medieval village town thing. Um, so a town, all, the first thing you need in town is it needs to be close to water. I'll cover rivers a bit later on I think. I want to, I'll do want to cover rivers, that's something I've really done on the channel. Uh, but it needs a roadway to gain access to it, so that's my thinking why I'm kick, kick, kicking it off with this video. Uh, I also thought about names for this town. Um, I was going to call it Mifam, but I thought naming a village after me is a bit egotistical. Uh, then I thought about we had the last year we had started the advanced hero quest campaign where we had the town of Strudeldorf. I thought that might tie it too much into um, that system and that game but I want it to be fairly flexible and be used for multiple games so at the moment I'm leaning towards Oakham um, so I guess we've already started this uh, series with the notice board and there are some other videos on the channel that could also go towards it so I'm going to create a new playlist for it anyway and put all those videos and this and future ones in there so yeah um, let's get building the road to the town then First thing I'm going to do is use hot wire cutter and cut out some squares that are 6 inches by 6 inches. Once I've done that, at the top I'm going to come in and measure 1 inch in from each side at the top and the bottom. And I will also uh, measure half inch on either side as well. These will be guidelines for later on when we start making the banks. So I will then just draw a rough area of where I want my road. As long as it starts and ends at that one inch line, I can have the road any shape in between and they will all line up. Now I'm going to come in and put in that half inch line on the top and bottom of either side. And this is for, so I can and come in with a knife and cut a uh, angled section from that mark to the uh, bottom corner. And again, if I put them in any position, they will line up perfectly by doing this. Just by um, so I'll start by just doing that on the uh, both sides, and then the cut in between can be. Uh, any any way I want it and it will just line up lovely. Now this is uh, what you'll see on the side of the road. A lot of people like making their digging their roads into their terrain if you've got purpose boards. But I kind of like going above because roads were built up looking at how Romans do their roads and medieval roads and on the side you'd have a drainage ditch that would drain the water away so that's what this represents that drainage ditch so I quite like having my roads above anyway. Uh, once I've cut 
uh, into it. I'm just going to push in, just blend it in a bit more with my fingers. Being this is foam, you can just push these rough bits in a bit more. It doesn't matter too much because we're going to be covering it with uh, sand anyway in a bit. But now we're going to do the road itself. So I'm going to use some ready made filler. You could use some uh, stuff that you make up yourself. Uh, I'm just going to take a big dollop of this and put it into a uh, plastic container in which I'll add water to make a sort of fairly liquidy paste. Um, almost going to be looking at consistency of a thick white PVA glue. Um, possibly should be wearing gloves for this, I don't know. I tend not to wear gloves for a lot of things because I'm very tactile and like to feel what I'm doing. Uh, so once it's in that sort of pace, I'm going to get it out and sort of just spread it out into the road section, keeping it within the lines uh, on the uh, ends. Um, yeah, just going to use that to spread it out. I've, you've got a fair amount of working time before it dries out, especially as we've added water. I apologise for my camera angle. Um, it's very difficult when you're building terrain to worry about if you're, everything's in uh, shot or not. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm just sort of getting some filler and I'm going to spread it out within that sort of road pencil line that I've marked out and try and keep it off the uh, edges as well. Once that is covered, you can come in with a coffee stirrer or a bamboo stick and put in some wheel lines and uh, you can dab it to get some um, hoof prints like I'm just doing here. Uh, but for the most part, you're just going to really add some sort of detail in like. And once you get it, as it dries, it's, this bit becomes easier to do. Um, so you, sometimes you might want to wait a few minutes just to let it begin going off. But just a case of dragging it over, adding some uh, depressions in as hoof marks, and go away. Um, well, whilst we uh, before we get to the next stage, you want to do the other styles of road. So most of them are going to be quite similar. You're going to come in with that inch. Uh, bit in either side but for a t-junction um, a corner you're gonna do uh, two at the top two on the side rather than opposite each other and draw in much like what's going on here for a t-junction it's somewhat similar to a uh, sort of called combination of a straight and a circle do a little inch on either side at the top here and then straight opposite to opposite at the bottom and for a crossroads it will just be pretty much the same uh, top bottom and side to side just doing a little inch mark hopefully you can see that here and we're just going to join it up And we'll then fill in the half inch mark for the angle. And for these little bits, you only have to go in sort of halfway on one side, halfway to on the other side. And that is your, your angle bit cut out. And that will fit in with the other normal bits like so. What I end up doing is also making some longer bits which are 12 inches by 6 inches and I made 7 of those. I made 7 uh, straights of 6 by 6. Why 7? Uh, because that's all I had uh, the polystyrene for. Um, probably would have liked to have done 8 of these but I've got 7 so that's that. I made uh, six corners, uh, two T-junctions and two crossroads. Uh, when doing things like the crossroads, the corner and the uh, T-junction, you kind of want to 
make the pattern go in multiple different directions like the cart's gone round the corner it's like so you're not just doing it straight you're doing it so it's going around the bend coming into it and, and, and so forth just so it isn't uniform Always make sure you don't get any plaster on the edges, otherwise it won't line up. Next, coming with some watered down PVA and just, I'm using a paintbrush to apply it to the drainage ditch banks. Uh, I'm gonna cover that all over. And once I've covered it all over, I'm gonna then sprinkle some sand into this area. Uh, again, I'm just being very careful not to get any on the edges, just so no sand will get glued there. Here's some modeling sand. Uh, just, you, just put it in the uh, tub and then just flipping it on. Tap off any excess and leave it to dry. You don't really need to worry about getting complete coverage because we'll be adding flock to this later on. This will also add some nice weight to it as well, uh, the sand. This is an unneeded step really, um, but I just knew it was there. I'm just painting black on the underside just to get rid of that pink. You don't need to do this because no one will see it. It should be on the tabletop. I'm just doing it to be complete. And if you wanted to, you could add a bit of Mod Podge to this to add some protection to the underside. But here I'm just painting straight black. And speaking of Mod Podge, I'm going to make a uh, sort of Mod Podge mixture, sort of based, loosely based on um, Black Magic Craft. But instead of going black, I'm going to be using a dark brown burnt umber because I want to get a mud type effect painted into it. So it's like a 50 50 mixture of uh, brown paint to Mod Podge. which I will then mix up using the coffee stirrer I believe I'm using here. Uh, when you add Mod Podge to any paint, so if you're doing it black, you will notice that you will end up with grey. Here I will end up with a much lighter brown than what I want, but I can uh, remedy that in a minute. Just because I want it watered down, I'm using some uh, paint, water that I already use for paint, so it's quite brown and cloudy already. Because, uh, I want this somewhat runny because the materials, the plaster and the foam and the sand are quite porous. But you can see by doing that it's even lighter now, um, which is not what I want. So what I shall do next is come in with some black ink and add a full pipette full of the ink into the uh, mixture just to darken that down effectively what I want to do is get this the color of Nutella which is uh, quite appropriate because I am using a Nutella uh, container empty Nutella container here to mix it up so yeah that's the uh, color I want once you, I've made that up, it's just a case of applying it all over the uh, the piece to the banks and to the road itself. I've mixed up quite a lot of this mixture because I mentioned this is all a very porous material, so it just sucks up that paint straight away. And once it's done, I'm going to come in with a tan and just give it a good dry brushing all over the banks and the road itself. Uh, this is a colour called Coastline. Um, it is actually a household paint. And this is a tester pot of it that I'd use for such things. It's out way cheaper than buying craft paints and definitely cheaper than buying hobby paints for things like this. Next, coming in with some watered down PVA uh, glue again and applying that to the banks once more. 
And once I've got a nice coverage, it's time to apply the flock. flock that I'm using here is uh, pretty much a uh, Woodland Scenics uh, green blend but it has a few other flocks that I've added to it over the years as I sprinkle back into it. Not deliberate, it's just when I sprinkle other flocks I always sprinkle it into this container so it's a, it's a green blend with my own blend. And this is what it looks like uh, when it's complete. Um, it's uh, these will all go together nicely in a nice grid pattern uh, and the pieces can fit together nicely as you can see here um, it's a nice short sharp easy one this uh, but it's the first stage in getting my village medieval village together the road you need a road system but um all the pieces are done um, I'd like to take this time to thank you for watching uh, if you enjoyed it hit the like button if you haven't subscribed yet please do um, it's a uh, it mean a great deal to me if you uh, subscribe and like and leave a little comment down below uh, what I shall do now is get all the pieces set up and we'll have some glamour shots so just uh, wanna say thank you for watching and until the next video guys please take care